<laughs> well, we're going to tell the career, uh, tell the story of Sparky today. Here with Sparky Lyle, two-time World Series champion, Cy Young Award winner, and the former manager of the Somerset Patriots, celebrating your 80th birthday this weekend. You look like you could still lace them up, though. And <laughs> great to have you with us. <laughs> High school didn't have a baseball team, so tell me just how you got your start in the game. We had a, a state, state finals American Legion game, and I started that game, and it was a 17-inning game, and I struck out 31 guys. Then my next start uh, had had a scout there from the uh, from the Pirates and the Dodgers, and of course I didn't throw hard enough and all that kind of stuff. And and I went uh, went down to Pittsburgh for an actual tryout, and I was actually throwing beside Steve Del Canton, who was a 95 mile an hour thrower. And the scouts were talking to him, talk to him, and I'm throwing at the same time, you know, boom, boom, boom. He's throwing, I'm throwing. I'm even admiring what he's doing. And and the scout came over to me and says, "Okay, Lefty, you ready to cut it loose?" And I said, "I have been." And then this went on the rest of the year, and uh, after numerous scouts and all wanted to see me pitch again and all this and that, a scout from the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, named George Stoller saw me pitch one time and he says, uh, how far do you live from here? And I said, I don't know, 10 minutes. He says, I'm following you home. And he talked to my parents. I said, I wanted to play pro ball. They signed the papers. And I had never been away from home, never flew on an airplane, never been a pro baseball player, all in less than 24 hours. <laughs> and then spring training 1966 is when I believe you got that slider. Tell me about Ted Williams approaching you and you know, just tell that story of how that slider <laughs> came to be. I end up pitching against one of the uh, D1 Florida State teams down there and I struck out uh, 12 in five innings. <laughs> and uh, he says, you throw that curveball with your thumb up in the air, don't you? I said, yeah. And I will say, if it hadn't been Ted Williams, I, my answer would have been, yeah, so what? They can't hit the damn thing. <laughs> he says, get dressed. For it. We're going outside. I'm going to show you how to throw that same curveball with your thumb on it. Hey, that sounds good. So we go back outside, and uh, I'd say 10, 12 pitches. I was throwing this 12 to 6 curveball, throwing it, and I always threw it hard. And, and during that time, he says, you know what the best pitch in baseball is? And I says, change it. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so far, I haven't been right all day. You know, so he says, it's a slider because he says, you know, that's the only pitch that I couldn't hit when I knew it was coming. And the next day I went out and uh, I was warming up and I said to Bob Montgomery, I says, slider. He says, you don't have a slider. I says, 24 hours ago, I did not. But today... <laughs> And then you get traded to the Yankees for Danny Cater. Is that kind of the, the staple of your career? Do you feel like, would you have had the, the career, the success you did, if it weren't for going to the Yankees? And what was your initial reaction to it? Well, I think that's hard to answer, Eli, because I, I think if I would have, would have been uh, used like I was with the Yankees, then the answer to that is yes, I would have been. I had already made up my mind that I was gonna throw this slider every pitch. When I went in the game, I'm coming in the game to finish the game. So it didn't matter right-handed or left-handed. When I put that uniform on, and, and I always did feel this way when I went to Yankee Stadium, but when you put that uniform on, you gotta honor that. You know, it's, you're you're more than a baseball player now. You got, you got something that it's not something you can depend on. It's something you gotta put the tradition back time after time after time. And it definitely made me a better player, without a doubt. And that 1977 season, Cy Young, World Series, one of the most historic teams in the franchise's history. Yeah. What stands out to you about that team, about that year? It's, it's just how, how we did things. I mean, we probably had more fights in the clubhouse that <laughs> year. Uh, a, a few times we were, we had to stop a fight to 
get out there because uh, they were getting ready to play the national anthem. And then we'd fight for each other. So that was a mark of a very good team. And winning the Cy Young, you're one of four AL relievers to ever win it. I don't know if another ever will. You beat out Nolan Ryan and Jim Palmer. Did did it hit you then? Does it still hit you now reflecting back oh, on it, how important that is in baseball history? I want to tell you that I had that thing hung that every time I come through that front door, that thing stares me right in the face. <laughs> and that's, that's the way I want it. Things that go on nowadays, uh, when that pitcher comes in to pitch that ninth inning, it's like, oh my God, like a fireman putting out the fire, you know? And that's the way I felt. But I would come in in the sixth, the fifth, the eighth. The, you know, the only way I ever started the ninth inning was if I had pitched the eighth. <laughs> <laughs> and Sparky, now moving into your time with Somerset, late 1990s, you walk into a car dealership and you come <laughs> away as the manager of the Somerset uh, Patriots. Uh, Tell me that story. I needed to buy a truck. And John Vukovic, who was a good friend of mine. We were friends for 30 years. I always knew that he knew some car dealer that gave him a truck every year. I says, don't you know a car dealer or something? I says, these guys are trying to stick it to me down here. You know? He said, well, let me call him. So I guess he called Stephen and said, yeah, come right up. So it turns out I had to order the truck. Stephen did everything he could to get me to buy one off the lot, but I knew what I wanted. And so we, I, I guess it took uh, four weeks, whatever. And uh, the truck came in and, and I'm in his office and he says, now I have uh, two things I'd like you to sign here. And I said, what, what do you mean? He said, well, one for the truck and I want you to be the manager of my baseball team. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what baseball team? And he started to tell me and I said, well, he said, have you ever wanted to manage? I said, no, I, I didn't want anything to do with it, you know, I, once I retired. and But what really made me uh, take that job was, number one, meeting Stephen Califer, but number two was the premise of the league, you know, trying to get these guys back because I saw many of them that were 23 years old or whatever, and, and they would get released in their very first year, and who knows why. And I, I thought that was a great thing. And you kind of built what has turned into a winning culture on and off the field yes. in Somerset. Yes. Five championships, three Manage of the Year awards. How prideful are you and what you've been able to build, You know, especially as you mentioned, creating that kind of clubhouse culture? Well, it's, it's something that we had. You know, I, I had that in, in uh, with the Red Sox, and I, uh, but the Yankees is where we really built that, you know, uh, by, you know, just making sure that everybody was on the same page. And when I say that, you know, there was no s superstars. They may have been, but in that clubhouse, they weren't. You know, everybody was equal. I don't care if you played in two games all year. You were just as equal as Thurman Munson who caught every game. And Thurman Munson felt that way too. Everybody felt that way. And I think that was one of the reasons that we accomplished so much what, what, we, what we set out to do. And having a partner in crime like Steve Califer too to help build this organization, you know, how oh, big yeah. was that in creating that culture? Oh, it was, it, it was phenomenal. You know, he, he said, well, one thing, he says, you, you are never going to meet another person like me. Mark my word. And I can tell you, that was truer, no truer words were ever spoken. <laughs> he made sure that uh, we played before a, a nice crowd every night, and, and the players really appreciated that. I mean, they, they enjoyed the camaraderie, I think, with the, uh, you know, with the fans. And, you know, I mean, these fans, they, they just took us all in. And they were, they would stand by us. They were loyal. And as we were winning championships, you know, we'd get, what, every other year or every two years, we'd get to that third year. What's going on? You know, we, we should have won another one by now. I said, hey, I'm trying, man, you know. I can't, I can't play for them anymore. <laughs> 
And Sparky Fall 2020, the Patriots and the Pinstripes combine. Yankees become the double-A affiliate. Just tell me the reaction when oh, you found out. I, I, I'm telling you, I, I'm i trying to think when I was that happy. And I was ha that happy for Steve Kelleher and the Kelleher family. And when he called me and asked me if I was sitting down, and I said, oh, man, I'm getting fired. <laughs> 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 and everything that, that started going from that moment on it was it was like uh, it just felt like that's the way it should be it's so good to uh, especially see guys go to the big leagues from here and uh, you know when I first saw uh, Volpe play I said oh my goodness this, this kid is just phenomenal and I, I remember Willie Randolph calling me what do you think about uh, about Volpe? I said, oh, gonna be a star. Gonna be a star. There ain't any, any doubt in my mind. You know, he's gonna be around for a long time. And uh, I can't think of anybody better to step into Derek Jeter's shoes than Volpe. What's been the most enjoyable part about the Yankee uh, Patriot I, partnership? I, I think just, for me, it's just looking out and knowing that those Knowing that those guys are out there in, in the pinstripe, I mean, they're still wearing the Patriots uniform, but when they get called up, I mean, it's extra pleasure to root for them and, um, and see how they're going to develop and, and what playing for the pinstripes is going to do for them. They don't even know that. Hey, happy 80th birthday <laughs> to you. What does the next 80 years look like? Very grim. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they look good. I am I'm feeling very good, and uh, and I'm just looking forward to coming to the ballpark. I, I think it keeps me young. Take that. Sparky Lyle, thank you so much for taking the time. Happy 80th birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.